Slicker's knight has just acquired superpowers. It's it's dancing around the board like he's dancing around the room. Oh, oh. never mind. <laughs> it's <laughs> almost stalemate, right? Like <laughs> there's a universe. Come on, just go here. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Man, fuck you, Slicker. I'm on a big tournament. I just remember I shouldn't be doing stuff like that. I'm so sorry. Oh man, that Don't was I feel like Oh my gosh, I can't believe he did that. Okay, GM Slicker, Slicker versus Nimneon. Okay, so let's start by looking at this game. I will look at it from the winner's point of view, which was, um, which was of course, the point of view uh, from Nim because he did win this game. Thank you to Hype711 for the Prime. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so we will start by looking at the games from today's PogChamps event. Uh, the first game was between Nimneon, uh, the streamer Nim, and, of course, GM Slicker who is, of course, Slicker, the variety streamer, uh, got the sponsorship with Team Liquid yesterday. So big shout out to Slicker as well. Thank you to Gort for the Prime. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, so let's let's look at the game. Uh, react to the post-interview. I did not catch the post-interview. I was, I was preoccupied. Okay, so D4, Knight F6, uh, Bishop F4, E6 was played, E3, and then Knight C6 was played by Nimnian. Now, what I'm trying to figure out, the Slicker preparation, I, I'm guessing this was this was um this was a preparation specifically that 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 um that Hans Neiman or Hans Neiman did with uh did with Slicker before the game is my assumption uh because I thought Slicker was playing slightly different openings thank you to Jack Frost for the tier one um he prepped this with Hans for Nim okay so I will watch some links on on don't don't spam the links now when we get to the end of the game we'll watch some links uh because I did not actually see any of it thank you to AMQO thanks so much Emco tipped five dollars. So, I really got into chess because of you. P.S. XQC is really cute when he loses and is sad about it. Okay, throw. thanks. Okay. Um. All right. I will pop it up. I didn't see it. Thank you to Brodos for the prime. So so let's keep going. Um. With the analysis. So okay. So so Hans Neiman prepared Slicker with this London opening. Same opening that I prepared for. Uh, same opening that I prepared prepared for Fusli in her very successful first round match against um against Erop. So, okay, so C3, D, Bishop D6. A bad move by Nim, um, bringing the Bishop out too early. I was a little bit disappointed in Slicker that he didn't, didn't drop the Bishop back. Because one thing that I taught uh, Fusli was that basically when your opponent tries to exchange these Bishops, you should drop the Bishop back. I thought that it would have, it, perhaps it could have been a little bit more helpful to explain this move. But anyway, Slicker plays Bishop D3. Nothing really wrong. Um, Castles, Rookie 8. And, um, and here... Slicker did not play knight e5, and th this is one thing that I think is very important to point out, is that one thing I really stressed when I helped Fusli the other day was that you really want to take advantage of the center. And so I, I showed her this idea with knight e5. Now, granted, it was a much different position. The, the position that I think I was showing her um, to play this in was something more along the lines of, of like, like this with the pawn being developed and the bishop here, whereas in this game, you'll see the position... Um, Position is like this. So basically, the difference is the pawn is here, and the rook is on e8. So, um, so, so what what I would say specifically is that in this position, uh, it would have been helpful, perhaps. I, I don't know how much Hans and Slicker really discussed, but to try and take the center right away by putting the knight up here and reinforcing that you're going to dominate the center here. So this would have been very important, I think, to um, to to play it like this. So, um, all right, so let's keep going. So queen e2 is played, and now uh, Nim correctly pushes e5 here because now he understands that, you know, if you look at this like, oh, it's last hour prep. Okay, no no wonder, no wonder there are issues. Last hour prep, no, 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 no wonder. Um, okay, so in this position, uh, basically, Black has to develop this bishop in this rook. The two pieces are not coming in. Hans and Slicker have have good chemistry. That 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 makes sense actually. I can see that. I totally do see that. So e5 um, takes takes bishop c4. Uh, sl the point is if Black has this bad bishop here. So what you want is you want this to occur. I'm um, sorry. Rook takes e5. Um, thank you to Ray Rakesh just for three months. Thank you so much. And if Black White brings a knight out. You push the pawn, and now you bring the bishop, and you try to connect the rooks and bring the rooks to the center of the board. So this would have been, um, this would have been, or this is the idea that that Nim was playing for. So here, bishop c4 is what Slicker played. Nim takes the knight, and uh, Slicker blunders by taking with the pawn. Uh, he should have taken with the queen here. It's very important, as I've stressed many times to quite a few different streamers, that you definitely don't want your pawns being split with your king like this. So always look to capture with the queen here. So he takes, oh, was this a mouse slip or not? 
Was this a mouse slip or, or, or am I wrong? Um, I assume that he just played it, right? This was this wasn't a mouse slip. No, he, he just he missed the idea. And the problem is now after bishop takes f4, um, white is down one bishop because if you capture this bishop, then you you lose your queen. And not only on, do you lose the queen, you have the triplets here on this line, and um, and it's really really bad here. So he went knight d2. Um, one thing that I noticed in this game, however, was uh, was that um, Nim was uh, Nim was much slower than Slicker. Slicker was moving a lot quicker. So even though Nim was up a bishop here, I had a feeling that this game could could go either way just because the time situation was very dicey. Whoa! Thank you to Kildare for the one hundred dollars. Tipped one hundred dollars. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so, so now here, bishop to e5 was played. Uh, Slicker played f4, and Nim immediately getting too cocky and confident. I don't. Maybe cocky is the wrong word, but he did some kind of dance. I think when he was up, uh, when he when he was up the bishop here, right? Chat. Didn't he do some kind of dance? He did some kind of dance. I think when when at, around this point, right? I he, I thought he did something, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, or no, Slicker did. No, Slicker did the dance. Um, Slicker did the dance after d5, I think, or some somewhere around here. I think Slicker was doing the dance, but 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 anyway, the point was Nim here could have just taken the pawn again, and it's the same thing. White can't capture the bishop because you take the queen, and it's just an extra pawn. Someone did dance. I know someone was dancing. Everybody was dancing at some point during this game. This was actually one of the greatest games that I've seen. Both players were having fun. They were both like kind of trash talking, not like to each other, but they were like dancing and like. I love the showmanship from both Nim and um, and Slicker in this game. So Bishop takes f4 would have would have uh, would have been a good move. Instead, Nim blundered with d5, and now Pawn takes Bishop. Um, and the problem here is that after you uh, take the Bishop, White just takes the Knight. And at this point, it's um, it's basically even material again. When you look at the start of this position, Black has uno dos tres. White has uno dos. And um, in this position, you'll see it's uno uno. So one equals one. So, um, so, so therefore, uh, Rook takes e5 was played, f4 was played by Slicker. Very, very good move, by the way. Both went over, went too far. The trash talk. I have not. I was not listening to the commentary, you guys. So I, I, uh, I wasn't wasn't paying close attention. Anyway, f4 would have been a good move here, or it was a good move by Slicker attacking the Rook. Uh, now, if you take the Bishop, you lose the Rook. So Rook to h5, um, Bishop d3 was played. Team Liquid warns Slicker. I, I don't know. Team Liquid Warren Slicker. I don't know what that means. I'll watch clips after you guys. Not not right now. Not right now while I'm doing the commentary. Um, so Bishop G4, a good move by Nim, attacking the Queen. Knight F3, Bishop to H3, which attacks the Rook here. Uh, rook to E1, Queen to D6. I'll watch the interview once I'm done with the commentary, you guys. Um, so Knight to E5 is played. Rook H4. I was actually very worried for Nim because at this point, Nim, I think, had maybe a minute, minute and a half on his clock, whereas uh, Slicker, I believe, had uh, had maybe five minutes, somewhere around there. So, um, to, to me, I was I was very concerned for Nim at this point. Queen F2 is a good move by Slicker, attacking the Rook, forcing the Rook back to H5. Now, Slicker played C4 here. I would have been very curious to see how the game continued if uh, Slicker had played Bishop to E2, attacking the Rook. Um, just very, very interesting to see how the game would have transpired. So uh, C4 has played Slicker. It was 16 seconds to 430. Well, the problem is when, Sli when Nim was really low on the clock, he was already winning the game very cleanly. So C4, D takes C4. Slicker played Bishop to E2. Very strange move. Um, Bishop C4 was the obvious move, and now you're attacking this weak point with both the Bishop and the Knight. I'm sorry, both the Bishop and the Knight. And again... Very tricky position. I'm not sure what would have happened. What would have happened instead? Slicker won bishop e2, and Nim made the blunder of the day, moving the bishop back to g4, hanging this bishop. And I think this is around the time that Slicker got up, and um, Slicker got up and started dancing. Right, if I'm not mistaken. So knight g4, knight g4, and after this, White is now up one knight here, uh, and things were looking very, very dire for uh, for for Nim at this point. He was way down on the clock. Way down on the board and um, very, very tricky. So he plays rook to d5 here. King to queen to f1, played by played by Slicker, attacking the pawn. Rook to d8 here. And Slicker played e4. I suspect the reason that he played queen f1 was he wanted to try and trade the rooks at some point. Um, thank you to Louis Dog for the prime. 
So e4, rook d3 played, uh, rook to d1, and this was a huge blunder by Slicker here. He blundered this rook. At this point, he is still quite a bit better. What he had to do was try to bring his rook in, um, or maybe try to push these pawns in the center. If he does that, he would have remained up the extra night and probably in control of the game due to the fact that Nim had so little time on the clock. Unfortunately, uh, Slicker here played Rook D1. And the reason this was such an unfortunate mistake was because what happened is it liquidated where so many pieces come off the board that it made it almost impossible for Nim to, to, to blunder the game. So they trade the Rooks, takes, uh, he plays Knight F2. Nim correctly trades the Queens. And again, now it's one Rook against the Knight. So the, the chances of, of surviving are very, very low. And um, unless... Uh, Unless Nim were to walk into a fork where the knight can attack the king and the rook, it's uh, it's just game over. So Nim plays b5, a3, a6, king1, g5, uh, f5, f6. Basically, just trying to push these pawns up the board. Uh, knight d1, c6, knight c3, a5, h3, b4, trade. And now after rook d4, knight c5, c3, the game is completely over. Of course, black is going to push the pawn and make a queen. You can't bring the king over because uh, the rook the rook cuts off all the critical squares from the king. So this would have been uh, this would have been, or no, this was just completely winning. And I'm not going to go over the rest of the game because, as we know, uh, Nim basically started doing the BM. He started BMing uh, by making a ton of rooks, but it's all in good fun, of course. And I think they are they are actually friends. Thank you to Ice Age Heatwave for the prime. So no need for me to keep looking at the rest of the game, but. Uh, nonetheless, Nim, Nim decided to promote a bunch of pawns and make a bunch of rooks. I'll just go to the end position, which was right here. Um, and he, he basically just made sure that he makes the checkmate. At this point, it was already getting a little bit dicey because white only has one move. And, you know, you don't want to accidentally, like, make a stalemate with, with, like, the rooks cutting off the king every which way. So, um, uh, Nim correctly, you know, he, he, he toyed around for a little bit, then he did find the right checkmate and he won the game. So... Um, winning this game meant that he wins the first game. He moves to three points in group C. Um, S Slicker is on zero points, but there's still two more games to go. Um, BM is now a word in chess too, truly turning into an eSport. Yes, BM, BM is absolutely a word in, in chess. Um, so, uh, all right, you guys, I am going to watch some interviews. Okay. Is it, is it a VOD? Is it's probably a VOD, right? Uh, does someone have a clip or do I need to watch the VOD? I probably need to watch the VOD, right? Let's let, let's watch the VOD. Whoops, that's not what I want to watch. Okay, um, okay, let's watch let's 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 watch the VOD. Okay. Um, no, where is it? Know what okay. that means? But no, I it's got to be pretty early, right? It's got to be early. One the second. Opportunity, and we were impressed by. How, how often do you promote a pawn to a knight? Once you got your rook. It's somewhere in here, right? Is around here. Yeah, I'm collect. You should have taken with us like a that. I didn't even Tuesday, and then, uh, you know, you know, you. Okay, but let's just watch. It's okay. And we return. With oh, the oh, oh! Wait, wait! You guys, you guys want me to watch when watch when Slicker joins? Okay, one second. How, how often do you promote a pawn to a knight? You know. Sound good, you guys? I would have done bishop. But uh, once again, I was careful with the diagonal. I was hoping you would get a knight here and then go take his pawn. It's too low. Okay, I'll turn it up. Promote your H pawn to another knight. That's uh, what I wanted to see. If we're looking at a board right now, I can't see it. No, just the end of the game. Just in the end. Right. Yeah. yeah. You just had one other pawn. It's that good. You okay. Uh, stolen his pawn and pushed yours. So I was hoping for as many pieces as possible, but oh. it seemed like you decided to, uh, you know, let him off easy. Yeah. Um. I think at some point I was, I just wanted it done with, man. My heart was racing. I just, um, thanks yeah. DG Kohler for the prime. Completely understandable. You were in time pressure for so long. Fantastic game. Thank you. And how does it feel to get your first victory? <laughs> what what was that? He's like, mm, thank you. Mm, thank you. That, that, that was a good one. Let me, let me go back. That was a good one. Let me rewatch that. You decided to, uh, you know, let him off easy. Yeah. Um, I think at some point I was, I just wanted it done with, man. My heart was racing. I just, um, yeah. Completely understandable. You were in time pressure for so long. Fantastic game. Thank you. <laughs> and how does it feel to get your first victory? I like that. It's like, mm, thank you. Uh, it feels very good. I think, it, I think, especially with the games being so far apart, 
um, you know, it, it, it's it's rough to go that long without and like feeling like um, I don't know. It's nice to have a win in the back, and now you can kind of move towards the other game with a bit more confidence. Um, and now I know that if I win one more game, you know, I'll be advancing. Well, look Hello. who we brought here for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but listen, mate. Listen. Mm -hmm. Listen. You don't understand this name, okay? Why the hell did you do that at the end? Tell me, why did you do that? Who the hell do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> you were. I, I saw clips of you sh 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 tr talking trash nonstop before the game. Okay, and then also says the one that streams like my stream, huh? Says the one that was sitting in my chat watching my tactics. Someone huh? sent me a clip. Someone sent me a clip. Okay, that's not sitting in your stream. No, you were you in my watch. streams specifically more than one hour. Okay, <laughs> you just, you in the chat. You stream sniped my tactics. I use them. Chatteri I For starters, I use Chatterino. And secondly, Slicker, if you want to watch me play chess in my channel, Twitch TV slash them, you're welcome to do so. Maybe you'll learn a thing or two. <laughs> let, me, let, me tell you, so, let me tell you something. Listen, let me let me tell you. These the, everyone. This guy is a joke. Let me tell you right now. A simple joke. Why? Think what you're doing. Think them. Okay, go back to being a DJ, my friend, because <laughs> you don't know who you're messing around with. I acted, I played. They call me um, um, Leonardo Mohammed. You know why? Because why? I acted right there, mate. I played okay. you to think that I wanted to win. I don't want to win. I wanted to win for the loser brackets. Hopefully, that's oh, that's not gonna okay. disqualify me. Let me tell you why. E Rob will be there. Man, I pull out with the cash, cash. <laughs> Yeah, well, mate. You're gonna go up against. You're gonna go up against Yasuo. I am telling you, you have no chance up against him. No chance. Yeah, no chance. Yeah. You're going up against Forsen, the guy that Those, made you. No chance. <laughs> the guy that made you. Uh, sure taste sour, don't taste liquor. Um, I don't have grapes. What do you mean by that? Now try and explain yourself. Never mind. Well, if you need any help getting through the the losers bracket, let me know. Uh, I can maybe hit, you can hit me up and I can coach you. Hey, listen, okay. Don't worry about it. You seen how I played there? I took your rook and I was a, 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 I was ahead with advantage. You took Doesn't my rook. I took you with my. That was worse. That you actually no, lost. I know, but listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. Listen to me. I done it on purpose. Oh. P U R P O S E. Purpose. Oh, what that well, means? don't I look like a fool? Exactly. Go ahead. We'll see how, uh, where you'd go up to. Do you, you think you're going to reach the finals? Because, by the way, you win, you <laughs> won't make it out. You won't go to the disqualified section. What's it called? <laughs> um, the, what's it called, guys? Consolation oh. bracket. Consolation bracket, mate. You ain't making that. Confident, listen, confidence. I mean, I'm giving you something. When you're too confident, I don't want to be in there, dude. I want to be in the, with the champions. <laughs> now, let me tell you that, bro. Uh -huh. That will only happen when you sleep. Okay, you're awake. You're, you're, what's up? Is it unconscious? Conscious. Okay, <laughs> you're not unconscious. When you're unconscious, you dream and you think or you dream about stuff. That ain't gonna happen, mate. Congratulations. Woohoo! Me, me, the free wow! <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Hey, uh, Slicker, I got a, a little secret for you. Yep. Uh, losing games on purpose, that's uh, against the rules. You know, it, it could only get you... Yeah, you no, know. but Chess won't kick me out. Chess won't <laughs> kick me out, right, guys? Would he kick me out? <laughs> well, you can't spell Chess without my last name, so it's not really up to me entirely, but we just throw a little C in there and... I know, I know. Listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I did lose on purpose. What are you gonna do now? I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't kick me out, don't kick me out. Of course I didn't, of course I didn't. No, um, uh, good game, play, man. You, yeah. actually did, you played very well, Slicker. You actually just got DQ. I thought I was gonna fucking lose. DQ? You're just getting news Slicker, right now. Slicker, you're, you're, you're gone. Wait. Now, you know what? I guarantee you're joking. You never do that on stream. Yeah, LSF farming, that's what you're trying to do. That's what you're trying to do, LSF farm right here, mate. Don't try and get me on here. No, I know that. Listen, you think I'm... Just because you guys play chess doesn't mean your high I, your IQ is extremely good. I play Agreed. defensive strike. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Let me tell you a question, okay? You move the queen to d4. Where do I throw my smokes? Huh? Where do I throw my nades? How do you control an AK-47 recoil pattern? <laughs> <I'm> not... <laughs> um, and Hess doesn't even know what he's talking question. about. Oh my gosh, this is there you go. sorry. This is too funny because neither Hess nor nor Daniel have any idea what he's even talking about. They they don't even know they don't even know which game he's talking about. 
This is hilarious. We we all got our own talent. That's it. We all like. I mean, he's talking about CS:GO, right? I assume he's talking about CS:GO, but I, I'm not 100 sure. Yeah, he is, right? He is, right? Yeah, of course. We yeah. all got our own talent. So you're saying you were playing Counter Strike this whole time while you should have been practicing chess? Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what a burn! Maybe they just got fed up with you. Yeah, he's quiet now. Yeah, but look at him go. <laughs> I know he's. Did he do this on purpose? I think he. he oh, he accidentally himself. muted himself. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, that's mind games. I mean, yeah. you can mock me all you want, Slicker. I, those three points are still mine. You can't. You can't play your way around that. Self mute. Self mute. Wow. Wow. Um. Well, Nim, we'll give you the floor for the final thoughts because it didn't seem like you get a word in with Slicker, uh, unmuted. Oh. Well, I was just enjoying the show. I didn't feel like I needed to. The wind speaks for itself, I think. <laughs> um, uh, well, I know I'll, I'll, we were joking, obviously, and uh, no, it was a fun game, actually. Was, uh, yo, yo, hold on, there about joking. You said joking, huh? You said joking. Christ, turn down your volume. Oh yeah, but my bad, my bad, my bad. Wait. No, you're not joking. Wait. Oh, Wait. Hold on. Hello, hello. Correction. Um, uh, correcting. Um, uh, simulation. Hello. Hello. England. Yeah, England. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Hello. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Yes. All right. Um. Yeah. I really forgot what I said, mate. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of things. Um. Listen. It, it was a. It was a good game, man. Honest to God. Yeah. I'll take that lose easily. I'll take that lose. It was a good game, man. You know what? Nim. What? Yeah. How can I say this in the nicest way ever? You are shit, but. You need to watch out, bro. You need to watch out. Seek out. Look at you. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> we'll see how far you get, mate. That's it. Yeah, yeah, smile, <laughs> smile. Smile. Right. That's it. Hey, Thanks, well, Slicker. Nim, as a payback, I I'd be willing to help coach you, you know, going forward because Slicker is giving you those fighting words, and I like Slicker a lot, but I can't let this uh, talk be so one-sided. So I'm, I'm willing to step in the ring, give you some help, and see if you can uh, continue making the progress. You played a great game today. I like it. How about how about Slicker? You you stop pretending after this game now, and uh, we'll pl both play in the champions bracket. And uh, I'll I don't think I can make it to the champions match. bracket. Can I? You can still you, if you win both your next games. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you still have a chance. You can... Yo, man, still making cash. Jeez. <laughs> okay, I see that. I see that. Okay, boy. Yo, listen, I was. Uh, was... GG, will play, boys. Was I didn't nice watch the slide. No, I did not watch the slide. Sorry, I did. I didn't actually watch it. No. Thing, right. It was pretty intense. Yeah, but I don't know why you done that at the end. I really don't know why. You should, you could have not humiliated. This is really like good that. though. Why made you wait one minute and because you were being seconds. annoying to you were being annoying to me. It was obvious that the game was over, but you wouldn't just give up. You know, there's a button that just says like resign. Right? I offered a draw button. We both would have won one one. I'm You're not going to take a draw. Why would I take a draw? I'll take a bullet for you. Counter <laughs> <laughs> Strike. back there now. True. No, I'm talking about Minecraft. Anyway, uh, boys. I was, so, I was so nervous that I'd somehow get cocky and mess it up, okay? That's the real answer. So I started pushing more pawns, and then eventually, I was... Okay, I kind of had fun eventually. I kind of got addicted to the power. Then I yeah, no. All I'm going to say is, I love you all. GMS, I swear to God. Listen, you are a... You're a funny character. I respect that. And you will blow up on Twitch. I'm telling you. Keep your grind up, you know? And um, Daniel, bro, listen... Bro, you're good looking. There you go. Thank Nim. You. Bro, listen yeah. to this. Nim. One word. Uh -huh. Karma. <laughs> That's it. Believe in it. Believe in karma. Because when you play against Yasuo, he's going to make you, you, you... Peggy 3. He's going to make you frustrate yourself. Oh, no. Yes. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm you're playing against you, e Rob. You're saying if I lost against you, I would have won against Yasuo? Because of karma? No, if you played it, if you just rushed it and took me out easily instead of taking, moving all the pawns oh, to take multiple queens oh, you're still angry or rooks. Oh, okay, it's not about winning or losing the game. You're just angry because huh? of. Yeah, just out. remember that. I remember uh, this. Remember My I'll next game. Same thing against Yasuo. If I play against E Rob, remember this. It's like me playing against a minion on League of Legends. Easy game. <laughs> oh! Easy game. Anyway, boys, thank you so much. Oh, thank Yo. thank, thank oh, you. Oh, ouch. For what was an awesome match, and the trash talk was even better than the chess. Oh. Team, we'll see more of you both. Uh, everybody yeah. tuning to their streams. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to cut out here. Show 
a reminder to everybody. Ooh, that is nasty. Oh my gosh. E Rob is a minion. Oh, that is nasty. That's a that's a real burn. Wow. Wow, wow. That's ooh. Ooh, that's that's a burn. Um, all right, you guys. Uh I am going to um, run to the restroom quickly, and and then I think when I come back, I am going to take a look at the at the game between XQC and um, XQC and who did he play against? Was it y Yasuo? It was Yasuo, I think, right? Um, so I'll take a look at that game in a second, and then I will. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm changing the scene. Don't worry. I'll take a look at that game, and then um, th then I'll figure out what I'm going to do. But right now, I'm going to run to the restroom quickly, get a little bit of coffee, and then I'll be back in a few, in a minute or two. All right, everybody, we are back, and we will take a, we will start taking a look at the game between uh, XQC and um, XQC and uh, and uh, Yasuo. So let me just pull that up. Um, <clears throat> they get a poison live for the prime thing. Command is two for the two months. They get a job for the tier one thing. Yaris for the prime thing. So much, everybody. Thanks for all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Um, all right, so let's let's. Wait, this is the wrong game. One second, let me pull up the other one. Um, <clears throat> okay, it was this one. Okay, let's pull up the game. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at this game. Um, this was the game between XQC and Yasuo in the uh, in group. I think they're in group uh, B, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So take a look at the game thank you to chicky chicky chick seven for the gift of sub swindlers fist thank you to sim bobways present thank you so much for the uh resub uh, appreciate it thank you um okay let's keep going so e4 e5 uh knight knight f3 knight c6 played here bishop b5 so yasuo decides to play the uh spanish the uh, rui lopez as we like to call it an opening that was invented approximately around 1600 maybe ish 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 maybe earlier i don't know when it was invented invented by the famous spanish priest uh Ruy lopez de saguara i think was his name uh, i'm not gonna go to wikipedia but at any any rate okay 1582 1600 1994 whatever you know it, do, it doesn't really matter but anyway um of course i of course i recall like i remember that too like I, I remember what I was doing 400, I, like 480 years ago. Like, I, I remember what I was up to all those many, many long years ago. Anyway, yeah, so this is one of the oldest openings in the game of chess in existence. It's from uh, uh, from the 50, late 1500s, I believe. So bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, b5. Uh, bishop b3 was played here, and now, uh, and now knight f6 was played by xuc. A little bit of a dubious move, trying to develop a little bit too early. Thank you to Beyond BP for the Twitch Prime. Thank you so much. Um, uh, so okay, let's let's keep going. Um, so so at this point, I mean, one thing that's very important to note. Uh, so one one thing to note um, to be to be very clear is that when your opponent plays a non-standard -sta setup, something like this, uh, maybe a bit of music. No music right now. Um, but I'll play music later, is that when someone plays an opening setup that's non-standard with moves that are a little bit unusual, one thing that's very important here is, um, is to look at ideas you have to attack early. Why didn't XUC play the Sicilian? Um, I think the reason he didn't is because he's been playing E5. Like I said, when he when he makes the next bracket, I am gonna bust my ass and I'm gonna I'll, I'll, I'll give him like two or three hours of lessons to help him as much as I possibly can. Um, and that's uh, that, that's going to be the, the intention going forward. So, okay, knight f6, d3 was played. Yeah, I mean, if he wants two hours, I will give xqc two hours um, of my time. So d3, d5, white trades. And this kind of violates the opening principles because what you want to do is normally you want to develop your pieces, get your king out of the center of the board. Thank you, Demi Mensch, for the prime. Thank you so much. Um, so you want to get your king out of the center of the board as fast as possible. He said he wants 20 hours. Tw what, XCC wants a 24-hour 24 24 training stream, right? 24-hour training stream, right? <laughs> he said he wants 20 hours. Yeah, yeah, 24-hour training stream. Oh, my gosh, I would lose my mind. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, Bishop G4 is played by XCC. I really like this idea because one thing that, that XCC has not been very good at doing is very oftentimes he has not developed one side of the board. So... So the fact that he played bishop g4, I really did like here with bishop h5. Um, knight bd2, a move trying to defend the, the, 
the knights here. Uh, one thing I would add, though, is that it's very pesky when black gets a bishop on this diagonal towards the queen, because in this case, your bishop is far away, so black has all kinds of ideas to overload this knight and take advantage of your um, of your queen here on d1. XQC thinks he's in the loser's bracket already. Um, if I help XQC, I think there is a chance he could put up a good fight against Hutch. There's also the chance of, like, the circular, uh, where everybody wins one game against someone else in the bracket, and everybody gets three points. Um, am I drinking alcohol out of a coffee cup? No, I'm drinking coffee. Um, thank you to I am D David Drizzle for the prime. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so Mo played knight pd2. Very good move here. Um, defending the knight on f3, keeping the queen um, protected. So thank you to uh, Mysterious Cow for the prime as well. Bishop c5 played by XQC. Um, <clears throat> knight e4. Uh, and now... XUC played f5. One thing that I didn't like was that he brought the bishop out a little bit too early. What he should have done here was move the bishop up. And then after white plays a rook move, just castle the king. King is out of, out of, out of the center of the board. You can move the bishop and move the knight and defend all of your pieces here. So this would have been better. He played bishop c5. And now knight e4 is played. How to respond to the London opening. Um, it's the best opening in chess, you guys. There's no no good response, as we saw yesterday when, when Fusli uh, beat E-Rob in 13 moves. So, okay, bishop c5, knight e4, f5, played by, by XUC. Probably should have moved the bishop back to b6 or e7. They need a cool guy for the three months. Um, instead, he played f5, takes, castles, uh, bishop g5, queen d6, d4. And this was kind of the critical moment of the game. So, at this point, I think XUC had about maybe four minutes on the clock. Um, and Yasuo had, I think, about seven and a half. And this was the moment where XUC basically um, all his chances evaporated right away when he took the pawn with the pawn on d4 here. Um, what he should have played was push the pawn forward. And this is what you call pin. The bishop is pinning the knight to the queen. So if white ever moves the knight somewhere, you just capture the queen. A queen for a bishop, very bad exchange of pieces, not something you want to do very frequently. So XUC should have pushed this pawn because the pawn supports it. And now you can't move the knight because you lose the queen. And um, computer actually like pawn takes pawn. I, I mean it. it we're, you're looking at it at a different level if you're if you're saying the computer liked it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, again, the objective evaluation is that white is much better, you guys. But these these are not grandmasters playing the game, and there are a lot of tricks involved. So when I when I talk about analysis, I'm not looking at the game as someone who is treating it like a grandmaster. I'm looking at it from a more basic, simplified standpoint because the players will not be able to play um, at a grandmaster level. So, okay, so e4 would have been a good move here. It attacks the knight, and white has some issues as he's going to end up losing this extra knight that he has on the board at this point. So, XUC took the pawn on d4 with the pawn, and now white brings the knight back to d3 here. And the problem with this position is that at this point, it becomes very hard to play because there, there's this pin, and black can never really overload the knight anymore. You don't have a pawn because you captured, so there's no pawn push where you can attack the knight on this critical square. And at the same time, you can't even move the knight to overload because white's knight now controls this square. So, by taking the pawn with the pawn on d4, um, it ends up basically killing any hopes of uh, any hopes of of, uh, of of getting counterplay for the one knight that you're or the one bishop that you're behind by at this point. Um, there are many moves that are good for White. For example, I thought um, Knight B7 was strong here, uh, but Knight D3 was just a very nice move. How should White get out of the pin? Um, I mean, the thing is, at this point, White has this pin. So White has his own pin lined up against the Queen and the Knight. So it's um, so there are other ways to take advantage of it. But they're pretty advanced and not stuff that you would expect um, newer players to find. So he played D4, XUC took, Knight D3. Now he played H6, and Yasuo found a very nice move here. He played Bishop to F4. Black cannot capture the Bishop because of the pin. The Knight is pinned to the King. Um, and so now after Queen E6... Uh, Yasuo played rook e1. Very logical move. Bring the rook to the center of the board. Attack the queen. Play on this open mid lane here. And now um, XUC took the knight. I think you definite for the prime sub. Uh, at this point, it was already very hard. Maybe he could have moved the queen back to save the knight. But after bishop takes knight, queen takes bishop. Uh, now you end up losing the whole house here. Because what happens is the bishop and the queen dominate. And your queen is under attack too here. Thank you to Bejugal for the prime. So queen, D, queen g6. Now bishop takes d5, attacking the king. But also with the queen and the bishop lined up, you end up losing the knight as well. King h7. Yasuo is very good in the mid lane. Kappa, exactly. Um, 
Bishop takes knight, uh, rook e8 now after bishop takes e8. Uh, Yasuo is way ahead here. He's ahead by um, he's ahead by a knight, a bishop, and a rook for several pawns. So at this point, I think the game was basically over, and um, and I, there's no need for me to go over the rest of the game because because of how how big of a, an advantage it was. But nonetheless, I, I would say that I was impressed by Yasuo's ability in the middle middle of the game. Found some very good moves um, to. Uh, to basically press the advantage, developing the pieces, very nice, bringing everything to the center, attacking the bishop, trying to bring this knight to a good square. Um, so I, I was I was very pleased by seeing the play from both players. I was impressed from Yasuo's standpoint. Very consistent, very solid moves. Uh, no real mistakes other than the one pawn push in the middle of the board. Um, from on the other side, I was impressed by XQC. I do not think he did any preparation as far as I understood. Um, and the fact that he played a new opening, he played this Rui Lopez Spanish defense, was uh, very, very nice to see. Played some good central moves, got the bishop out very early. So he was developing very nicely. Unfortunately, blundered this bishop. I would have been really curious to see what happened in the game if he had put the bishop out and cast with the king, because the material would have been even. He would have been able to, uh, he would have been able to play more. Impressed with our play? Yes, you guys. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna add a disclaimer here. So a lot of people are like they assume because I'm a grandmaster I view the game as through the grandmaster lens all the time. Um, what I would say in regards to that very specifically is I've been very fortunate in my upbringing because my stepfather, who many people know of, he was a professional. Um, he's been a professional chess coach for many many years, nearly half a century now. And so when you grow up kind of with some with, with such a you know with a father father figure or father let me just say father because he is my father basically um, who uh, who teaches kids like teaches kindergartners teaches first graders um, you know someone who teaches beginners the very basics like the perspective is completely different so like I, of course I'm a grandmaster if I watch a game between two grandmasters being played on a on a chess site my my, my reactions are going to be much different i'd be like why are they, these guys so bad at chess why are they blundering a rook why don't they see this basic tactic and so forth um but again i think i think because of uh because of having a father who teaches chess um what what you end up seeing is like you realize the different perspectives the different levels and you can kind of separate it and put it through a different lens completely um and so when i look at these games i'm not looking at it as perfect chess i'm not looking for perfect moves i'm not calling you guys kindergartners the point i'm making is my, my father is he's taught he's taught these um these these kids who are who are beginners to the game completely so because of that the whole perspective is different and when i watch these games i'm i'm not looking at it as a grandmaster i'm looking at someone where i want to see improvement i don't want to see perfect moves i just want to see some improvement i want to see something a little bit different uh, do I call him my dad? Yes, I do. I mean, he's technically my stepfather, but I'll give you guys um, one one quote. Uh, it's not a quote, but I will give you guys. Um, there's there's a Steve Jobs quote, isn't there? Uh, what is it? There's something like, and, and it's not to be rude, but there's there's a there's a famous Steve Jobs quote about his biological father. Um, I'm gonna find it quickly. Uh, um, well, let, let me pull it up quickly. Yeah, so so there, there, there's there, there's a quote that basically says, um, on speaking about his biological parents, they were my sperm and egg bank. That's not harsh; it's just the way it was. Um, uh, a sperm bank thing, nothing more. And he says, yeah. Uh, so 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 that's basically the point that I'm going to make is that yes, I do have a biological father. Yes, I have seen him. I have seen him um, in Japan several times. But having said that, there we have very little in common. Um, we don't tend to relate to each other. We don't. We don't actually even speak the same language. So, in, in general, um, I would say that, that, like, yes, blood. You know, if you, if you have a biological father or something, of course it's different. But for me, I do view my stepfather as the person who uh, raised me. He is the person who has been present for for my life. So, so he definitely is what I, what I would call my my father. Um, so, all right, you guys, uh, let's let's keep going. Um, that's just that's my take on it. I mean, you don't have to agree, you don't have to like it, but I mean, I think the person, the people who are present in your life, they are the people who shape you, and in many ways, even if they are not, say, blood relatives, they are the people who are responsible for you becoming the person that you are. So, um, so, so that, that's what I would say. All right, you guys, I should go on Doctor K. That's like the only thing that I will say that I have in my family that's a little bit, you know, a little bit, little bit like traumatic at times. Um, but anyway. Uh, okay, let's keep let's let's keep going with the game. Um, so, all right, so knight bd two, bishop to c five. 
Played, or actually, no, sorry, we looked at this. I was at the end of the game. I'm losing, like losing my train of thought. So um, but, but anyway, yeah. So, so as I was saying, like with, with, with my stepfather teaching, teaching all, all these kids of all different varying, varying, uh, you know, age levels and, 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 you know, skill and so forth. Um, you tend to view things differently. And I would add one other thing. So, um, there are a lot of chess programs in schools, even here locally in Florida, where I live right now. And, um, there was a time when my stepfather was down here. He was doing a uh, he was doing a teacher training session. So so what what was going on is there were, were chess curriculums, and the teachers need to have some basic understanding of chess in order to help the kids who are learning the game. This doesn't mean the teachers have to play chess, but they just need a basic understanding. And again, you know, getting back to the basic point, when you're doing all these different things with people of all different levels, all different ages, backgrounds, and and all that stuff. Um, you tend to have a very different perspective and a different lens in terms of how you view, uh, view the game of chess and what you're looking for. So that's why when I see these openings, like what XUC does, I'm not expecting, you know, yes, if, if a grand, I'll, I mean, I can tell, tell you guys how I would view this. Let's say it's a grandmaster game. I'm grandmaster game. I'd be like, why is this GM bringing the bishop out? What is he doing? He's violating the principles. Surely his opponent's going to play knight e4, knight g3, rook e1, take the pawn, or even c4, a4. It's very loose. The bishop is on the wrong diagonal. It should be on b7. This guy's just not playing very good chess. So there you guys go. That's what I would say if I'm looking at as two grandmasters playing the game. So if I'm not looking at two grand, grandmasters at the game, my, my, my take is completely different. It would be, okay, at this point, Black has developed the pieces. He's put the bishop on a good diagonal. Both players are developing pretty normally, and the next couple of moves are going to be very critical. So, um, so yeah, in general, my, my perspective gets, gets shifted because I have a very different background um, in terms of uh, approaching the game. Um, do I think getting back to basics actually helps my own game? Well, one thing I would add is I, I don't necessarily teach a lot of chess because again, it can start to affect the meta. You start thinking in, in more simplified terms. And as you get better and better at chess, the, the way I like to put it is chess is a game of a thousand rules. You develop the pieces, you bring your knights out, you get your king out. There are a lot of very basic rules that you learn over and over and over again. But then at some point, what you end up learning as you get really good is you learn that there are a thousand rules, but you learn the exceptions and you learn when you can break the rules one by one, essentially, and when it's possible to do that. So, um, so, so that's, that's what, that's what I would say in terms of learning and so forth. What is the 546 rule? Is this where I, like, I have some tablet with a thousand rules on it or something? Thank you, Abe Hell for the prime. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so all right, you guys here. Okay. Let's, let, let's watch some of these clips. Okay. Um, let me move myself down. Okay. Okay, so let's see. I feel like Slicker's knight has just acquired superpowers. It's it's dancing around the board like he's dancing around the room. Oh, oh. never mind. <laughs> it's <laughs> almost stalemate, right? Like <laughs> there's a universe. Come on, just go here. <laughs> God. Slicker, <laughs> fuck you, Slicker. I want a big tournament. I just remember I shouldn't be doing stuff like that. I'm so sorry. Oh man, that Don't I feel like oh my gosh i can't believe he did that i'm gonna watch it one more time slicker's knight has just acquired superpowers. <laughs> it's, it's dancing around the board oh like my gosh that is so good oh jeez. Oh, it's <laughs> almost stalemate right like you, you, there's a universe come on just go here <laughs> god and there's a slight delay fuck but... you slicker wow wow okay um wow that that's classic that's that's pretty classic um what else do we have what other clips do we have? How would I feel if another GM did that? I mean, sometimes it happens. Um, but anyway, let's let let's see. What what other clips do we have? Hess looks startled. Let me go back. He looks startled. Hess is like blushing, isn't he? He's like really blushing. He's like really red. That's pretty funny. Okay. Um, XUC plan and Pog champs. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll pull, pull that clip up later. Um, okay, what other clips do we have, you guys? There there must be a, a zillion clips. Um, uh. Big conference. Okay, what is this? Chris, he now understands the fundamentals of the opening. And sure, he will not play perfectly every single move, but right now he has the ideal setup from the white side of a London. And now he castles and he's got 10 minutes and one second. And Nim is the one who has to constantly make this decision. Do I take the bishop on f4? And when you're only starting chess, it's it takes a lot of time to make these decisions. And you pointed to this out, Robert. <laughs> 10 minutes might seem like a lot, but for these players, they're not that experienced. That time evaporates really, really quickly. And already seven and a half minutes, seven moves in for Nim. What is, what is Slicker doing? Do you see him just like getting around and, you know, 
<laughs> yeah, I'm looking now. <laughs> He's in. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? <laughs> Does somebody oh actually, somebody have a clip of that I, on oh his own stream goodness. doing that? Because I'd be curious to hear what he was Am saying. Am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? <laughs> I, I have never seen anyone exude this confidence. <laughs> Not a single grandmaster who I've come across has ever been this confident. Chris, he now understands the is, is there is there an actual clip of that on Slicker on Slicker's channel of, the, of him doing that? Because I wouldn't mind watching his, w with his actual audio there. Team Liquid warns Slicker. What is this? Don't. Oh boy. Don't tell someone to suck your dick in an interview, please. <laughs> oh, Symbolic said. Oh, damn it. Who's, uh, who's, who's oh Symbolic? They run Liquid, huh? Yeah. Oh. oh I mean, I was gonna permit it, but yeah, man, chill out, man. Symbolic, stop being. You don't need to worry, man. Oh no, I'm not calling the interview person. I'm calling him um, um, Nim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what other clips do we have? Let's see. What What other clips do we have? Um, we have any, I, I want to watch a bunch of clips from today, you guys. I mean, that's <laughs> Slicker Raging versus Nim. Okay, what is this? For a check. He's going for a check. Oh, no, no. But if he goes here, I could take him with my uh, horse. Okay, he can't go for a check. He can't. He can't go for a check. He can't. He sees that the G4 square. 52 seconds. Yalla, Allah. Allah, bis khallas al la'ba. Allah, bis khallas al la'ba. Ikhlas al la'ba, hissa. Please, Allah. Oh, I... He's praying to Allah, okay. basically. Oh, now he's going there. For a check. He's going for a check. <laughs> that, that's pretty funny. Okay, that, that's really, really funny. Okay, what else do we have? Um, XCC realizing he played against Mo. What is this? Okay. QC as well. All right, well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. And yeah, thanks XCC for the game as well. Bye, guys. Bye. Wait, was that Yasuo that I played against? Yeah. What? Yeah, you played Yasuo. Who, who do you think you were playing? What? I thought I was playing against Moist Critical. I, I, did, I did in depth prep, <laughs> long analysis for, for uh, Moist Critical. You see, as well. <laughs> and I love the Gladiator music in the background, too. Like, the Gladiator music just takes the cake. That, that's, a, that's, that's really, really funny. Um, okay, what other clips do we have from today, chat? Do we have any other good clips from today? From. From, uh, from, especially from the Nim game, probably. From the Nim game, there should be some really good clips. Um, what else do we, XUC plan to play in Pog Champs. What is this? Right. Hey, man, good luck. This 800 rating Andy will go to winner's bracket and then get completely demolished back to eat, back to Noob Lord, right? If I go to lower bracket, I meet trashers like, like L Rob, like, like, like trash, like, and it easy. And we go to the money. She got baited by my chest <laughs> player, dude. He got baited. Yes, he got baited. He actually fell Same. for it. Can you fucking believe it? Even if you play this, might, this, right? this might literally be like the only time that I've seen people lose and, and they're act they're acting like it's good. Like XCC is making the jokes, it's funny. But it was really funny when um when Slicker literally is doing the same thing when he's talking to Nim. This is like this is hilarious to see actually. It's really funny. Um really, really good. Uh that that is good stuff. What is this? Young Arab, uh oh, this this could be bad. Let's let, what this is this clip? Almost a stalemate. This is like kind of getting to that point. He's gonna do the trade. Um, yeah, he he. I like okay, that he's. Knight F4. Okay, he goes for it, but now White makes a checkmate. Right? No stalemate well, here. Don't stal. Oh no, there's a pawn oh, at H6. So he can't yeah, stalemate. Oh. Multiple checkmates here. Brutal, brutal. Yeah, yeah, that was that was tough. I mean. Other than the opening blunder, it seemed him. like XTC I, I, I did, was off did, to a pretty did, good start did, did. there. Yeah, I mean, the I big mistake... Definitely. For, this is only I understand what was so special about that clip. But anyway, yeah, I, what, what was so special about that clip? Um, yeah, I, I don't understand. Okay, what, what else do we have? Do we have any... We've got Words of Wisdom. What, what is this? Words of Wisdom? Um, yeah, what, what is this? Okay. How did... How did... Chat, watch out. Analyzing a loss is part of accepting defeat. People who accept defeat like you are people who give up. That's why I went to the fucking world stage of watch. That's why you're crossing your mama's basement and your ass is fusing with your chair, you pussy. That's why you're going nowhere. Analyze loss, get better, move on, and, and, and do a takeaway. And you're stuck 
Your, your ass is fusing. It's you baking in your mama's basement, open. sucker. I don't be <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> how did, how did you do? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Definitely interesting. Interesting. Interesting stuff. What else do we have? Uh, do we have anything else that's good? Uh, Slicker dances with audio at 454.46. Okay, I'll pull it up then. Slicker. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Let, let's see. 454.46, you said, right? Um, let's go to videos. 454. I appreciate a lot, man. I don't want to watch you. Yeah, so 454.46, right? Um, okay. 454.46. Okay, here we go. 454.46. Okay. Okay. Why have I got 10 minutes and he's got 8 minutes? I, I'm, I Let me pull up the chat just to see. Oh, but is that cheating? Is that cheating? Let me check Um, Nick or Staff. Mess ah, see? He got that boy. Staff, um, if you're watching and you think I've done something incorrect, let me know. Because I'm on a way now. You see what I'm doing now? I'm exercising my brain. It's energetical movements. You see, these guys don't understand. If you move, you think a lot more. So I'm gonna move, and then I'm gonna yeah. So you guys can see me, okay? The the chess people see me. So I'm gonna move our thinking, okay? So he moved the fucking chess, yeah? I moved the 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 king. So what have I got to do as a team liquid player? Shout out to team liquid for, <laughs> for him, you know what I mean? But as a team liquid player, what to do? Yeah, nice try, Bitty. I muted my bit sound so you can't Exercise talk. Exercise the brain, Shit. yeah. But free money. Boo, boo, blow. I'm running out of breath, which means could I could uh, dehydrate. Let me drink. What? Okay, why did he do that? Sorry, okay, what? he gave himself space. That's why he he done that so he could give himself some space. Now he, he I remember this. I remember this. I remember that. So now what? Fucking hell, Hans. Okay, that's Weird. this is good though. This is good. Thanks. Uh, Nim brings the violin for its slicker. Okay, let's let's watch this. As long as you make sure that ah! the opponent's king has squares, or if it doesn't, you're checking it. That's the way to go for it. <laughs> No, Here you go, Slicker. Right it's the there. world's smallest violin <laughs> what a, what a, playing just for nice you, guy. man. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a violin. Yeah, he's <laughs> got that emote, sure right? That he's got the violin emote. Squares, yeah. Or if it doesn't, you're checking it. That's the way to go for it. <laughs> no, Here you go, Slicker. Right it's there. the world's smallest violin. <laughs> what a, what a... Okay, what else do we have? Any other good clips from today, you guys? Anything else? Um, ha, ha, ha. Okay. Um, Torius. What else do we have? Do we have any other good good clips related today? XUC tries to intimidate Yasuo. No, but that, that's um, the same thing. What, what other clips do we have? Um, yeah, it doesn't look like we've got a whole lot from today. Do we? Keck? Did I watch Keck? I don't know. I think I watched Keck already. Right? I watched this, right? Is this just the regular clip? You, you, there's a universe. Come on. Just go here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I already watched this, right? Okay. Um... Based off of views, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see if there are any other clips. XUC versus Mo, what is this? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Because I took that the one. bishop with my knight. Is there a Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I... this one where Mo is making no sense. He literally is like talking in a different language, which I didn't understand. Because I took the bishop with my knight. Is there a world where I can take his knight with my bishop on b3? And then if he takes with the pawn that he just pushed up, I can take the next knight, fork the, or I can hit both the king and the rook. Then I can take rook, his queen takes, and then I end up moving my knight after is that not a better play it is right if you took his uh knight he could have captured back with the queen first and oh, then yeah. he would have defended his bishop no i mean all this would have made sense if he was talking about the right squares but he starts talking about random squares like he like i, I he starts talking about his bishop being taken by a pawn on b3 like at some point very early on you realize something has gone deeply deeply wrong um I, I mean, something has gone very wrong. Actually, oh, okay. you found the best move here. You should okay. feel good about that. Okay, never mind. The funny thing is, even Alexandra, when she responds, you can tell that she's like, she's like trying to make him feel good, but she's like, she also has that looks like, uh, like what's going on exactly. Um, it made some sense on a stream before. Okay. okay. No, what okay. you did was absolutely correct. It was the best, best play. Oh. I, yeah, I knew it. I was just testing you guys. Yeah, no, it, was, <laughs> it was a good game though. Us, I had yeah. fun, you know. Yeah, testing uh, us. That that's so good that he like he he recovers so fast. And he's like, I was just testing you guys. Huh.